In today's episode, we're discussing a topic that's all too common in the business world, the neglect of personal health and well-being. Why do so many entrepreneurs and leaders neglect their health despite the clear benefits of self-care and healthy living? I'm going to share six key reasons why this happens. By understanding these reasons, I hope to shed light on the common challenge facing leaders today and offer some practical solutions for how you can prioritize your personal health and your well-being while still achieving business success and enjoying the finer things in life. So whether you're a seasoned CEO or a budding entrepreneur, this episode is for you. Join me as we explore the reasons behind the neglect of personal health and well-being, and I'll offer some actionable tips for how you can overcome these challenges and lead a healthy, fulfilling life both in and out of the boardroom. Welcome to Executive Health and Life, where the focus is to help you maintain your edge and status while enjoying the finer things in life. I'm your host, Julian Hayes II, back at it again. And as I mentioned, we are going to discuss executive rationale. Now, why the word executive rationale? Well, first, let's break these words down. Executive rationale on a whole can simply be thought of as the thought process and decision-making strategies that are used by business executives and leaders. It encompasses reasoning, analysis, judgment. These are all things that leaders need to make strategic decisions and guide their organizations forward. Now, the term rationale refers to the underlying logic and reasoning behind a decision or action that you make or take. And the term executive refers to those who hold top leadership positions in a company or organization. I want to also add that you can include your life here because you are ultimately the CEO of your health and life. Now, put these two together again, executive rationale is the process of reasoning and decision-making used by top business leaders to achieve their organizational goals and their objectives. Sounds good so far. This is a fairly normal, typical thing. But here's the thing now, executive rationale can also become the very thing that leads to you neglecting your health. And let's immediately jump into this, starting with reason number one for why you may be neglecting your health, and that is none other than time constraints. This is the easiest one, so let's get this out of the way. When you're running a business, you're leading a team, you're looking after shareholders' financial interests, and many other responsibilities. These can be time-consuming. And when you have all these other responsibilities, this is part of the paradox of success. The higher you climb up success mountain, the more in demand you get. Unfortunately, you unintentionally start to put your health on the back burner. So this leaves little time for personal pursuits, such as exercising and eating healthily. When it comes to dealing with these time constraints, though, efficiency and effectiveness must continually be a priority and a focus and always top of mind. So a couple things that you can do. Number one is to schedule time for self-care. I know this sounds so basic, but how many of us actually have time scheduled for self-care? I know after I get done recording this, I have it in the calendar that I'm immediately going outside to take care of my outside trading session for the day. So just as you schedule time for work, meetings, and appointments, schedule time for exercise, schedule time to go get a massage, schedule time to go to float tank, schedule time to go to yoga, schedule time to go for that walk in the park. And this can help ensure that you make time for your health and miss the busy schedule. You put all these other things on your calendar. You got doctor's appointments on there as well. I'm sure you got such family events. And, and if you have kids, you probably have some of their events on there as well that you are planning to go to and it's a priority for you and nothing can get it in the way. And this is the same way that you have to go about your exercising. And this is a continual theme as I go through these points, that you must be selfish. Selfish is a bad word. It's perceived a negative connotation. But I'm here to tell you that being selfish is the best thing you can do. Because when you are selfish, you are completely filling up your bucket. And when you're overflowing, when you're feeling your best, when you're thriving, you are going to be able to pour into others in a 10x, 100x. It's going to magnify everything you do. So the second part here is to be mindful of your nutrition. When your time is limited, nutrition is the hardest part for a lot of people, even myself at times. 
it's tempting to grab what's convenient, grab some fast food, skip meals altogether, say you're quote unquote fasting, which for most people, especially in this type of people that I talk to, entrepreneurs, executives, people who are on the go, go, go all the time, fasting is probably not what you should do, but that's a whole nother conversation. So being mindful of your nutrition, this can help you maintain energy and focus throughout the day. Now consider using meal delivery services to ensure that you have some healthy food options available. It's the easiest thing you can do. It's just to say, hey, I'm going to have my lunch catered for me every time I'm in the office. You don't have to think about it. You can continue along your day and you got your meal ready for you. So the second thing here of why you might be neglecting your health is to prioritize work over health. You know, I'm doing it for the company. I'm doing it for the mission. It's your business, especially if you have a business. A vision, your um, business is like a kid. I think it's like a kid. Um, I would say it's like a kid. I don't know. People can tell me. But I imagine it's like a kid, though, nevertheless. And that's because this is, is something that's very close to you. You're, you're, you're connected to it. And with that, a lot of the responsibilities lies in your hands or on your shoulders. And so that can come with stress as well. And sometimes we tend to neglect our health because of this. And But sometimes, though, we can have leaders who will prioritize their work over their own health, even though they know it's they're not doing it on purpose. A lot of times this is unintentional because they're so focused, so tunnel vision on the mission, the task at hand. And they do this because they believe that taking time for self-care is going to negatively impact your business. If I take this hour to go run or to go to the gym, to go to the float tank, I love float tanks. So that's why I mentioned it again. I absolutely love float tanks. If I take my hour and a half to go to the float tank or any other activity, that's taking time away from my business. I could use that time to work on a sales presentation, work on a pitch deck, uh, make some calls, review some properties. And that's true. But the thing is, how efficient and effective are you going to be? And there's another point that's going to tie into this later that I'm going to save. But the thing is, the time that you put in when you're exercising, when you're taking care of your health, sure, you might be taking time away. But what you're getting on the back end is magnified. And that's going to be poured over into your business as well. And this is moving backwards, though. When somebody does this, this is moving backwards for a lot of reasons. You know, first and foremost, if you are a leader, you you have employees, and you're setting an example in the office, by you prioritizing work over your health, you are role modeling, but role modeling in the opposite direction that you want for your employees. As a leader, you are the role model for your employees. You are the pulse, the heartbeat. As you go, you set the example for how everyone else is going to move and operate. And think about this in the household as well. And think about if you had kids or people younger than you. There, a lot of times it's not about what you say. You know, I've done couple, corporate wellness a couple of times. And I go in there and give a presentation talking about different things, sleep, movement, nutrition, stress, you name it. And my biggest gripe a lot of times was that it wasn't effective. It may have been good for that hour, those two hours, but long-term, nothing was going to change because the leadership at the top was not fully bought in. Words, things you write on emails and posters and billboards, that's cool, but it's really what you do. You can say a lot of things, but how you move and how you act, that tells the real story. So it starts with you. So prioritizing work over health sends a message that work is more important than personal well-being. This can ultimately lead to a culture that's overworked. And secondly, burnout within your organization. You can have absenteeism, which is known. People get sick. They don't show up for work. But even worse, you can have presenteeism, which is where people show up for work. They show up to, quote, unquote, get the job done, but they're not really there or they're operating there at 50% of their potential and capacity. So prioritizing work over health can, as I said, lead to burnout. And this is detrimental to both your physical and your mental health. Burnout can cause exhaustion, cynicism, and reduced effectiveness. And when you combine all those things, 
that makes it difficult to perform to perform well in your job to perform even adequately in your job and this makes it pretty impossible to lead your team effectively when you're in this kind of state so when you neglect your health as i said earlier it neglects it decreases productivity decreases efficiency at work and this of course harms your business harms your business potential kills your mood and you may not be able to perform at your best when you're feeling tired, stressed, and unwell. So the third thing here of why entrepreneurs and leaders neglect their health. High levels of stress. Stress is not bad. Stress is not good. It has its moments. But it's all about how you control it. It's all about how you mitigate it. Now, leading a business or a team can be stressful, most certainly. And some individuals may use unhealthy coping mechanisms like overeating or drinking or even sex to manage their stress levels. And increased levels of stress that aren't controlled can most definitely lead to a poor work-life balance. And this makes it difficult to enjoy these personal relationships. This makes it difficult to enjoy these hobbies outside of work. Now, a work-life balance is ultimately a personal preference thing. But even still with that said, we still have to form some semblance of balance in our lives. It may not, it's not the perfect 50-50 split between family life and working or what, or those kind of things, like how maybe TV or society tries to portray work-life balance. Work-life balance is very individualistic to us. Now, when you continue to head down this road of unmitigated stress, this can lead to feelings of isolation. This can lead to feelings of burnout. And this can lead to strain on personal relationships. I don't think it's a coincidence that we see a lot of high performers, a lot of seemingly successful people on paper whose personal life and relationships is terrible. Out of control stress over a period of time can lead to health problems that can ultimately impact your ability to lead and make sound decisions in your business. So the fourth point here when it comes to neglecting your health is a, there's a belief that success requires sacrifice. And, you know, I think at the movie, the um, Avengers Endgame, and after Thanos has collected the Affinity Stones and he's wiped out half the universe, he has that, that, that sequence with uh, young Gamora. And she's asked him, um, did you do, did you accomplish it? And he's like, yes. And she's like, what did it cost? And he's like, everything. Thanos is really one of my favorite characters. I love the way he was portrayed in Endgame. But the reason why I say that is because a lot of times we think that we have to be the martyr and that we just have to absolutely give away and sacrifice everything in our lives to achieve our goal. And a lot of leaders believe this. A lot of entrepreneurs believe this. I believe this to a certain extent as well. That you, and this includes your health and well-being. Sacrifice is necessary, but this is taken a step one too far. You know, you know, sacrifice in terms of delaying gratification, living below your means, accepting responsibility for your actions and your inactions, giving away your Xbox in my case, which I had to do, no video games or none of that stuff, uh, no parties, no going out all the time. That's part of the invisible contract that you signed for this type of life, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are rising up the ranks in corporate, or whether you are already in the C-suite leading, you have most certainly had to give up a lot in your life to get there. But that doesn't include letting your health and your life suffer. You know, you see these people all the time talking about hustle, 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 hustle all the time. People hustle, my goodness, or they're, they're grinding. I'm on my grind, man. And they do this by any means necessary, all in the act of their business and career. But here's the thing, though. It's a paradox here. They do this only to find themselves attempting to buy back their health on the back end. This, my friend, is hustling backwards. Many leaders and individuals will spend all their attention and their energy on, let's say, building a roof. Let's use a house analogy here. So they're building a roof. All their time and attention is on this roof. 
This roof is your business and career. Now, they're not paying attention to none of the foundation of this house. And this is their health. But here's the thing, an entrepreneur, an executive, a top performing investor, a business leader, I don't care what your job is right now, a musician or whatever, you cannot be more productive than your health allows. So let's move to our fifth point. This is a lack of knowledge and resources. Now, leaders, executives, entrepreneurs, top performers in a domain, they may lack the necessary knowledge and resources to prioritize their health effectively. Because you ultimately cannot make better decisions if you don't understand your choices. You wouldn't make business decisions without intel and data, and the same goes for your health. So run your body like a business. You can't optimize a business without data and numbers, and the same goes for your health. Start tracking key metrics such as your heart rate, your HRV, your blood pressure, glucose and insulin levels, and other metabolic health numbers, your sleep quality, your biological age, your lean body mass, bone density, body composition. There are so many more, but just slowly, if it's overwhelming to you, just start to add a few at a time. Now, don't guess and rely on hope. Test and operate with precision. Knowing your key health metrics can help you make informed decisions and optimize your well-being. So whether you're a CEO or on the path to becoming one, or you're an entrepreneur, no matter what stage of the cycle you're in, further investing in your health and running it and treating it and operating and seeing it like a business is an investment in your success that will pay dividends in every single facet of your life. And lastly, reason number six here, a focus on short-term goals over long-term health. Now leaders, business people, they may prioritize these short-term goals, the short-term success, or this perceive that this sacrifice in the short-term over the long-term. They may prioritize this over long-term health and what this does is, of course, it's going to lead to the neglect of their physical and mental well-being. But short-term pleasures and the over-importance of the now leads to long-term agony and regrets down the road. Think and view and operate your health within the lens of a long-term investor, not a day trader. Neglecting your health can be costly in terms of money and even more importantly, time. You know... Whether that's time away from the business or the family, or simply just not having enough energy for when it matters most. Suboptimal health can impair cognitive function. It can impair your decision-making abilities. And of course, your overall performance will be hit as well. So when you neglect your health, you're compromising not only your, your ability to make sound business decisions that will benefit your organization, but most importantly, you are compromising yourself in the long run. So as we land this ship here, it's important to recognize that negligence with your health, even if it's unintentional in most cases, which it is, these can all have negative impacts that not only affect your personal well-being, but also your business and career potential, along with those closest to you. Striving for continual excellence, striving for continual refinement when it comes to health, when it comes to longevity and performance, it's not just benefiting you. It's benefiting the greater good of the world. I know this sounds grandiose, but it's factual. Because when you're taking care of your health, prioritizing your energy and well-being, you are able to show up better. And so even the person that you talk to down the street, you're able to pour into this person that more effectively because you are in a better state. So you're benefiting the greater good of the world because who knows, by you pouring into that person down the street, he might get what he needs to pour into somebody else. And it's a trickle-like effect. So prioritizing your health and your well-being leads to increased levels of energy, leads to improved levels of focus, improved levels of productivity, and all this equates to sustained levels of peak performance, along with maximizing your longevity. 
So if you'd like help with this, let's talk. I'll be glad to assist you. A link will be in the comments for you to take the next step. Nevertheless, though, until next time, stay awesome, be limitless, and go be the CEO of your health and your life. Peace.